Hello everyone out there, my name is Sarah Brown. I teach math at Wing Luke Elementary to third, fourth, and fifth graders. And I want you all to know that um, everyone who works at your school is thinking about you so much and we miss you and life is really boring without you. This lesson today is for anyone who's interested, but we are going to be going over um, standard algorithm multiplication and relating that to the area model and the partial products method that we learned earlier in the week. Um, this is a skill that's appropriate to fourth and fifth grade. Um, it might be review, it might be new. Um, if you're younger than that or older than that, join us anyway. Um, so before we get started, again, we wanna say hi to your classmates. We've got Mole, we have uh, Zahra, we have Neville, and of course, we have our friend Chicken Soup. Um, these are all special guests from, um, with their actual names that belong to my friends um, Neve and Sachel. So thank you, Neve and Sachel, for loaning us your dearest friends. Okay, so let's start with a warm up. This time we're gonna do uh, true or false equations. So you are gonna look here and you are going to decide, is this true? And if it's not true, then you are going to figure out how to make it true. So um, today for this lesson, um, something to write with, something to write on, and a multiplication chart, um, very possibly the one that you made with us earlier in the week, um, will be handy. You don't need anything else. All right, so seven times eight equals seven times five plus seven times three. True or false? Take a moment to think about it. Okay, Zahra really wants to talk to us about this one. Okay, um, so I forgot to tell you, to challenge you to not just solve it, but to try to think structurally about it. Try to think how, um, if I took seven times eight apart, would these be the parts? Okay, so seven copies of eight. Zahra says this is true because eight equals five plus three. Think about that for a moment. How does this fact make that true? And remember the equal sign just means the same as. A lot of times we're not used to seeing it eight equals five plus three. We wanna rearrange it and put five plus three equals eight. Same thing. Eight is the same as five plus three. Five plus three is the same as eight, has the same value, okay? Okay, so um, uh, Mole would like to add on and say, yeah, seven copies of five, right? Um, and seven copies of three together would make seven copies of eight. That is true. Fantastic. All right, so now I want you to be thinking about that one while you look at this one. True or false? Five times 12 equals, this time it's gonna be all in the same color, five times 10 plus two. Take a moment to think about it. Okay. Chicken Soup says that, yeah, this is also true because 12 equals 10 plus two. Well, that's true, right? 10 and two more is 12. Here we see 10 and two. 
So 5 times 12. So 5 copies of 12. Is that the same as 5 copies of 10? Oh, 5 copies of 10 and 2 more. So especially fifth graders, if you've been um, practicing order of operations this year, we know that multiplication is stronger than addition. Sorry, addition. Okay? And we know also that um, in an expression that the first, that this, this, this part would come first, this term would come first anyway, right? So we're going to do 5 times 10 first. And then it's just two more. This is not five copies of two. So this would be five times 10 is 50 plus two. So this part, I'm kind of running out of space here, would be 52. But if you've been practicing, I'm going to make it come up here to have more space. Five times 12, we know is 60. So actually, this one is false. Thank you so much for making that mistake. We really learned a lot from your mistake. OK, let's move on. And we're going to do another three reads word problem and get into multiple methods to solve multiplication. OK. So at Wing Luke, we do three reads. Your school might do something different. And um, you can certainly practice it later with the method that your school uses. I'm going to go ahead and do three reads. So when I'm looking at a word problem for the first time, the first read is just getting an idea of what the problem is about. I'm not focused on numbers. I'm not trying to figure out what I'm going to do. I'm just making a movie in my mind about this problem. What's happening? What's this problem about? I'm going to read it to you. You can gently close your eyes or kind of look out the window or um, uh, just imagine what's happening in this problem, OK? While trapped inside, it's true. I know it feels like that. While trapped inside, a decent Chateau read a total of 28 books. If each book had 18 chapters, how many chapters did they read? If they both read the same number of books, how many chapters did they each read? So I'm going to tell you that when I'm visualizing this problem, I'm seeing Adis and Chaltu, hello, I, I really hope you're watching right now, who are two fifth graders from Wing Luke. And um, they're reading books. They're reading a lot of books. OK, that's what's happening in this problem. All right, second read. Second read, what is this problem asking you to figure out? What do you need to figure out? OK. All right, this time I want you to read along silently as I read aloud. While trapped inside, a decent Chaltu read a total of 28 books. If each book had 18 chapters, how many chapters did they read? If they both read the same number of books, how many chapters did they each read? Okay. So I'm already getting a little bit confused because there's two question marks. So I see this and this, OK? Sometimes kids think, oh, I'm just going to look for the question at the end. And that's all that the problem is asking. That's not true. There's actually, in this problem, two different questions. OK, let's start with the first one. So if each book had 18 chapters, how many chapters did they read? OK. Remember, we start with an open answer statement. They read blank chapters. Okay. This is a two-part problem. They're asking us to solve something else. If they both read the same number of books, how many chapters did they each read? Okay. So I should probably add they read blank chapters in all, right, together. Okay. And then my second statement is going to have that word each. They each read, OK, blank chapters. You could get into more detail and say if they each read the same number, right? But this gets to the point of it. They each read blank chapters. All right, third read. OK, this time you're looking for important information. 
Okay? So this time I'd like you to read along with me. We're going to go sentence by sentence and stop and talk about the important information. Okay. While trapped inside, a decent Chaltu read a total of 28 books. Okay? So important information, total 28 books. Read with me. If each book had 18 chapters, how many chapters did they read? Each book. Okay, I'm going to love that word, each. Okay, 18 chapters. They must have been reading a series book or something like that that had the standard format, because I know that's not totally realistic that every book they read had the same number of chapters, but hopefully you get the idea. All right. So last sentence, read with me. If they both read the same number of books, how many chapters did they each read? Okay, so there's two of them. We're gonna find a total number of chapters. So I know that they're gonna read less than the total so it's going to be the total number of chapters. We're going to split it apart. And since it says the same number, that means I can divide into equal groups, and there's two of them. So total number of total chapters divided by two okay, is something I'm going to come back to later. All right. So I already gave you a big hint. This is something that is going to be multiplication, right? So we have 28 books. So it's 28 copies of 18. So um, as promised, we're going to come over here. And we're going to uh, compare a few different methods to solve this problem. Um, here's some challenge options for you. You could change 28 to 283, or you could change it to 28 and 6 tenths as a decimal. Okay? So I'm going to need a little bit more space here. So first is area model, okay? 28 times 18. If you remember on that one, two digits times two digits means that I need two rows and two columns. I'm not gonna do it huge on the paper, so hopefully I'll, this will be clear enough. Um, sometimes you'll see this scaled more where the um, where the 20 times 10 is going to be a bigger part of the rectangle than the 8 times 8. But right now, I'm just going to do it simple like this. So first factor, I'll put on the top, 20 and 8. Second factor, I'm going to put into expanded form and put here on the left side, 10. That's a 10. That's an 8. Okay. So 20 plus 8 is 28. 10 plus 8 is 18. Good, let's do this pretty quick now. 10 times 20. Again, I'm going to go through and just do the equations, and then I'll solve them in a moment. OK, 10 times 8, 8 times 20. This is the 8 row, the 8 column, 8 times 8. Let me come through with a different color to make it really obvious. 10 times 20, I'm going to go through this pretty quick, okay? So try to, try to stay, stay with me. 10 times 20, 1 times 2 is 2, 2 zeros, 200. 10 times 8 is 80. 8 times 20 is 160. 8 times 8 is 64. Use your chart as you need it, okay? So then remember that we are going to do 200 plus 80. This is also partial products, right? We are splitting these um, numbers apart. We're finding the products of different parts, then we're putting them together. So we have 280, 160, oops, plus. Remember, I told you that it's really easy, especially when you're starting out, to mix up the multiplication and division or multiplication and addition. So go slow with those steps. Zero plus four is four. Six plus six is twelve. One plus one is two. Okay. Now we need to put those together. Okay. 280 plus 224. 0 plus 4 is 4. 8 plus 2. Okay. 
So 504. Great, I'm gonna come back over here. Whoa, a decent shell too, that's a lot of chapters. Okay, 504 chapters. Now let's look at this with partial products. Okay, so we'll do 28 times 18. Remember, we're gonna make the big plus sign, expanded form. Let me see if I can do my different colors. Okay, 20 plus eight, 10 plus eight. Let's do our equations. So starting in the ones place, bottom to the top, every number on the bottom by every number on the top, eight times eight, eight times 20. Okay, then we are done with our eight. Let's come over to the 10, 10 times eight, 10 times 20. Let's check our pattern, eight, eight, 10, 10, then eight and 20, eight and 20. And then look at this over here. Sometimes they're gonna be in a different order, right? But eight times eight, eight times 20, 10 times eight, 10 times 20, okay? We're doing exactly the same thing in a different form. Okay, so let's solve it. So eight times eight is 64. Wow, I really know it here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna blast through this, okay? 160, 80, 200, okay? Remember to draw your lines, really keep these in order. 64, four in the ones, six in the tens. 160, zero, six, one, 80. 200. Um, another place where kids stumble when they're first learning is putting these, not lining these numbers up correctly. So double, take a moment, and double check. Just make sure that they all are ending in the ones place and everything is the same. Great, we can add up. Four, six plus six is 12. 12 plus eight is 20. Two plus one, three. We got the same answer. I don't want to forget to come back and divide it by two, but right now, let's see how this is related to the standard algorithm. The word algorithm just means a way you do something, okay? All right, standard algorithm. Um, any older family members watching, um, if you went to school in the United States, this is going to be pretty familiar to you, okay? So, same rule, start with the ones place, start on the bottom, every number on the bottom by every number on the top. Okay, here we go. Eight times eight is 64. So we are going to put the number in the ones place here, and then 60, right? That's six tens. We're gonna put up here in the tens place. So the last digit goes here, okay? And the first digit, comes right next door. So we did our eight times eight. Now we need to do our eight times 20. That's really what we're doing, but we're used to thinking about it as eight times two, right? As eight times two in the tens place. Eight times two is 16 plus six, okay? So 16 plus six, um, I'm thinking of six plus six is 12, so then I know that's gonna be 22, okay? Look where you see 22 here, okay? Because that is eight times 20 and eight times eight, okay? So this isn't the first way that we teach students to multiply because it's harder to see that, okay? All right, so now we need to come over, we can cross that out, we're done with it. We're gonna come over here to the 10, okay? Since that's a 10, I can think about it as one in the tens place so I'm gonna put a zero right here, and I'm so happy that I remember it, I'm gonna put a happy face, okay? Um, uh, some of you might think of that, remember learning that as a placeholder. So yeah, you're putting a zero here to remember that this is 110, okay? All right, so now I can just think about it as 28 times one, that's really easy, isn't it? So one times eight is eight, one times two is two, and then you see your 280, okay? So let's go ahead and add those together. Four plus zero, two plus eight, one plus two plus two, 
and we got it again, 504, okay? So now, how many chapters did they each read? We need to take 504, divide it by two. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on division. Um, fifth graders, though, I'd really like you to spend time practicing division uh, while you're at home or while you're not in school because um, the middle school teachers next year will really want you to have um, some sort of method where you can do division efficiently and accurately, okay? So 504 divided by two. I'm gonna use the standard algorithm right now, okay? So two is the star of the show. Let me put my markers down so that I'm not blocking you. This is all about two, right? We're splitting 504 into two parts. So first thing, can I split 500 into two parts, right? This is just five, but it's in the hundreds place. Yeah, okay. I can do two groups of 200, okay? Then I'm gonna do two times two is four. I like to divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, repeat a remainder. There's lots of different devices that you can use to remember that, okay? Subtract. 5 minus 4 is 1. Okay, bring down that 0 in the tens place, and now I have 10 tens. Okay, so can I split 10 tens into two parts? Yep, I sure can. I have 5 tens in each part. 5 times 2 is 10. 0, 4, bringing that down. 2 fits into 4, 2 times. They each read. 252 chapters, okay? So at home, why don't you practice doing some problems with the standard algorithm, okay? So I'm going to give you a few to choose from, and you can um, endlessly make up problems for yourself to practice this with, okay? So um, let's start out with the smaller numbers. So let's do 23 times five, okay? I'm gonna um, start writing horizontally, but know that I want you to solve them vertically, okay? So if I wrote 183 times six, the way that you're gonna write it at home to solve it is like that, okay? So um, then let's do a four digit by uh, one digit. So 7,318 times Nine, you might need to use your chart for this, okay? And then um, let's do 46 times 52. Fourth grade, we expect you to know two by two digits and then up to four by one digit. Fifth graders, or anybody who's interested, take it further and let's do three by two digits, okay? Um, I'm gonna add this for fifth graders. 498 times three and six tenths, okay? And you can explore decimals further as well. Thank you so much. Um, that is our lesson for the day. I'm gonna show you a quick game now. And I'm just gonna do it right here. Okay. This game has lots of different names. Um, I call it the digit place game. Another name for this game is uh, Pico Fermi Bagel. Um, that's uh, what Math for Love calls it. If you need, are needing more activities to do at home, check out the Math for Love website. Um, so the digit place game. You're gonna to try to guess my number, okay? And um, I am going to only tell you how close you are by writing these two letters, okay? So at the top, we're gonna to write these digits and you can go ahead and do this on paper at home. And I really want you to pay attention to how this game works because you can play it with um, 
somebody else in your life, right? Maybe if you're working with a younger student, you could do two digit numbers. Somebody older, once you really have the hang of it, you can do four digit numbers. Okay, so um, we've got our classmates that really want to guess. So Chicken Soup says, I know. The number is 547. Okay, if I put a P next to 547, that means that um, uh, a P means that you have a right digit and it's in the right place, okay? If you have two Ps, that means you have two right digits in the right place. If you have three Ps, because this is a three digit number, you've won the game, okay? If there's a D, right digit, wrong place, okay? Um, and if nothing, wrong digit, wrong place. All right, so 547, nothing. Chicken soup, that is the best guess. That is the dream guess when you're just starting this game because we can eliminate all those numbers. I don't like that orange pen, let me use a darker one. We can eliminate four, five, and seven, okay? All right, next guess. 263, says Zahra. 263. That gets a P. That means one of these digits is the right digit in the right place. Okay, but you don't know which one. Okay, next one. This is from Neville. Oh, Neville says 963. So Neville seems like he's testing out that 200, seeing if anything changes when he replaces it with a 900, okay? PD, oh, interesting, okay? All right, so I just made a mistake, I'm so sorry. Okay, this should have also had a PD. Okay, so since these have the same, then actually, hmm, can we? What do you think? Let's, let's keep going. Okay, so 396 says um, Mole. Oh, interesting, so Mole's trying out a different order, okay? And again, we have P and a D, so we're on to something. That means that one of these digits is in the right place, okay? But look, they're all in different places. And one of them is in the wrong place. So that must be different, referring to different digits. Okay, then we have 776, and that's from um, Neville. Get a D. Okay, interesting. Can we say that the six is in and not the seven? Oh, we knew, oh, interesting. Okay, so Neville's, Neville's using that seven to test out that six. So we know there's a six, but we know that it's not in the right place. Okay, great. Okay, so um, next one, 767 says mole. Okay, that's where the six goes. So we know that the six is in the tens place. Cool. Chicken Soup says, all right, let's go for 360. You know what? People always forget to guess zeros. So if you're coming up with a number, and I didn't do this, but usually I'll write the number on a post-it and I'll hide it and then we'll check it out at the end, okay, to make sure, because you don't want the person who is hosting the game to change their number or forget their number, okay? So it's really easy for people to forget zeros. Wow, two Ps. So we know one of them is the 60, and then either the 300 or the zero, okay? All right, so um, Zahra says, hey, let's try 361, because she saw that there was threes in here, and that we had the P and the D, and we knew that it was in the wrong place, right? Or we were moving, we were in the wrong place here, so, Let's see, we hadn't used the one yet. All right, Zahra won the game. 
Um, that's all for today. That's a game that you can easily play at, um, play at home. All you need is a piece of paper. Okay, so thank you so much for tuning in, um, and thank you for being flexible in this really unexpected time. Um, please today send happy and positive thoughts to everybody in your school community, all the students, the custodians that are working so hard to clean the buildings, um, the cafeteria workers, um, the people on the playground, your teachers, your principal, um, the crossing guards. Send happy and positive thoughts to everyone at your school. Okay, try to be nice to your family. Remember that everyone at your school is thinking about you and that we love you very much. Thank you.